What is going on everyone? It is Mike and welcome back to Tech 24-7 TV. It doesn't matter if you already own or you're thinking about purchasing Apple's Magic Trackpad 2 because I have 25 tips and tricks to get the most out of your experience on the iPad. That is right, today's video is gonna make you a trackpad expert. I'm ready, are you ready? Let's get started. Today's video is gonna be structured into several different sections and I have timestamps pinned to each one of those sections in the first comment as well as a video description. First up, it is the basics. Now we're gonna talk about how to pair your trackpad. Now, if you already use your trackpad with another Mac, you wanna make sure that you unpair it from that Mac first. Now grab your trackpad, let's go ahead and power it on. And once you have it powered on, you're gonna go ahead and open up settings. You're gonna go down to Bluetooth. And in the bottom section where it says other devices, you should see your Magic Trackpad show there after a few seconds. Go ahead and click on that and voila, your trackpad is paired to your iPad. Super simple, right? Now there's a few different interactions that you're gonna need to go ahead and be aware of here at the beginning. Let's just go ahead and swipe up from the bottom here and now we're at our home screen. If you wanna go ahead and move the cursor around, you're gonna go ahead and use one finger, you know, just go ahead and move it left to right. Now, as you see here, if you go ahead and say, go ahead and select an app, you're gonna see that app kind of illuminate or what I would call raising up away from the different apps that are on the same plane so you know that what that's the app that you're selecting. Uh, let's open up Safari. Now, if you wanna scroll, one finger does nothing here, but if you take two fingers and drag up or drag down or push up or push down, depending on how you wanna think about it, go ahead and scroll up and down on the web pages using two fingers. Now, if you wanna get from this app that you're currently in, which is gonna be Safari, to another app that you already have opened, you're gonna go ahead and drag to the left using three fingers and that's just like swiping across any of the apps that you have open by using the three fingers left or right. Now, additionally, here is a pro tip for you. You can actually use the battery widget to see the battery life of your trackpad and any other accessory that you have turned on at the moment just by adding the battery widget to your home screen. And I'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and go where it says more widgets. I'm gonna find batteries. I'm gonna click on the plus button. And here we see that the battery widget is added now let's talk customization. You got a few different customizations that you can go ahead and do. So let's go ahead and open up settings. And now that we're in settings, we're gonna go down to where it says general. And from general, we're gonna go to trackpad. Now, first thing here is you can change the trackpad speed by adjusting the slider, right? So depending on how fast or how slow you want the trackpad cursor to move around, you can do so. Now, personally speaking, I find this third tick mark to be just pretty comfortable for me, but you can go ahead and move it down. You know, you can have it even slower, or you could have it kind of middle of the road. It, here, when it's the rabbit, it's like zooming around and it's very easy to get lost in my experience. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it back to where I want. Now the next thing here is gonna be natural scrolling. Just like on your Mac, you can go ahead and push down, push up if you wanna have natural scrolling turned on. I like it, it's just a personal preference. Tap to click, I have enabled and two finger click. Now I'll show you what that means here in just a moment here, but tap to click is gonna be, go ahead and bring you up the contextual menu and two finger secondary click is if you wanna go ahead and add a preview pane to it. So let's go ahead and bring it back here. Now, additionally, if we go back here into settings and there's a couple more settings that we can go ahead and, and tweak. If we go down to where it says accessibility and go down to where it says pointer control, pointer control here is this first option is gonna be in the appearance section. This is gonna be increased contrast. I really like this. It sounds like I'm kind of dating myself, but here, if you turn on increased contrast, anytime that you're using your mouse and the image on the background in the app changes color, it'll go ahead and invert the colors of the mouse. So like right here, you see the mouse is gonna be dark uh, dark gray, and then here it changes to white. It makes it easier for me to see it. I mean, just, kind of just personal preference. Next, we have automatically hide pointer cursor. So you can go ahead and choose to automatically hide the pointer anywhere between two seconds and 15 seconds. I find two seconds is gonna be the sweet spot. You can also go ahead and change the color of the cursor. And in addition to changing the color, you can go ahead and change the size of the outline in addition to the color. Now I like just the plain old white. Now here also you have the pointer animations. So the pointer animations, what this is gonna go ahead and do, it's gonna allow the pointer to go ahead and adapt and animate to end the on-screen elements that are on screen at that point in time. I have it turned on. Now I do like the way that this is, uh, it does allow me, I guess, greater readability uh, of what is going on on the iPad screen at that moment in time. You may choose to turn that off. Now, additionally, you can have this trackpad inertia. That's where if you are moving the trackpad, it will go ahead and stop automatically opposed to kind of drifting off for a few seconds or a few milliseconds. I have this turned off because I don't like it. Uh, but again, that's just personal preference. 
Next up, we are gonna talk about gestures. Now, the first gesture we're gonna go and learn is just bringing up the app switcher. So we're gonna use three fingers, swipe on the trackpad, go up, let go, and now we see bring up the app switcher. Now, if we wanna check out the different apps here, we can go ahead and scroll through the different apps using two fingers, and it's really just a rolling memory of the most recent apps that you've used. Now, next, we're gonna go ahead and learn how to go to the home screen from an open app. Now, much like bringing up the app switcher, we're gonna go ahead and place three fingers down on the trackpad, swipe up, but then actually continually pushing through until that app goes. Now, it's not as mechanical as I make it seem, but let's just go ahead and try that again. Three fingers down and just go ahead and push up. That app just gonna go ahead and disappears back to the iPad screen and you are at the home screen. Now, there are two different ways to go ahead and learn how to do this. So one, if you are in an app and you use one finger to swipe down, all right, you're gonna bring up the dock, but if you keep on going back from that, you see how that, there it goes. And then there's the app switcher and keep on going back. And then there's the home screen. Now the third and final way, it's a little finicky in my experience, but what you're gonna go and do is it's gonna be three fingers pinch in and that goes in there. Again, it's a little bit finicky depending on your placement on the trackpad or where your fingers being placed on the trackpad in my experience. See, it's like, hey, you're almost kind of close. Doesn't really feel natural in my opinion, but that is gonna be available for you. Now the next one is gonna be navigating Safari. Now let's go ahead and open up Safari here. And we have this web page open. Now normally you can navigate Safari by pressing this back button, pressing the forward button, but you can do the same thing here just by swiping two fingers and going left to right. Now along those same lines, you have the ability to go ahead and pinch to zoom in any app, really it's gonna be almost any app, that has some type of imagery or text. Like here, I can go ahead and use two fingers, pull out, push in, this is gonna work in Safari, it's gonna work inside Maps. Any app that supports pinch and zoom, you can do it two, uh, two fingers in or out on the trackpad very simply. And lastly, what you can go ahead and do is to reveal the dock, you can use one finger to swipe down like this. So one finger, just like you were gonna go ahead and go to the home screen, but you're gonna go ahead and just stop right about there. Now, next up, we're gonna learn all the different functions that are available by clicking around in your trackpad. So first, we're gonna talk about showing the notifications. To go ahead and pull up the notification shade, you can do it one of two different ways. If you're on the home screen, you can go ahead and use one finger to push up and that pushes down the notification shade. Or if you are in an app where you see the time date in this left-hand corner, you can just click on that and that's gonna do the same exact function. Now, if you wanna go ahead and bring up Control Center, you're gonna go ahead and take that mouse cursor, go up to the top right-hand corner and then you see Control Center gonna be, be there. And that's gonna work no matter where you're at in iPadOS. Now here's a favorite of mine, this is gonna be slide over. Now I have my first app open and let's just say I wanna go ahead and open up Files app. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull on, you know, drag up the Files app and I'm gonna find something else here to go ahead and open. I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, Safari. So it's good to know as long as the trackpad cursor is in the slide over app, you can use three fingers to slide left or right that will go ahead and cycle through those apps. Now if you wanna go ahead and view all the open apps, you go ahead and take three fingers, push up, and you get all the open apps. And if you wanna close one of those apps, you're gonna go ahead and just use two fingers to swipe up and it disappears. Same thing's gonna be for uh, if you wanna go and you work in side by side. Let's, let's go ahead and, and use Notion Still. And we're gonna go ahead and take Safari. We're gonna go ahead and drag it over here. Now that we have that open uh, that app open in Split View and go ahead and drag it, works just like how it would be with your finger. And if you see here, the mouse cursor, or sorry, the trackpad cursor, when you're not on a text element, is it looks like, you know, the, the tip of your finger. Not there, that hopefully that's not what your finger looks like. Now, one additional tip with slide over is gonna be is hiding and viewing all the open windows that are open in slide over. So all right, now I wanna go ahead and close this app. I'm just gonna take one finger and bring that over, push it off to the far right-hand side or left-hand side, depending on where you have it opened. And now if I wanna go ahead and reveal it, so you take, you know, take one finger and then it comes out. So one finger pushes it in, one finger pushes it out. And if you have multiple apps open, you can go ahead and cycle through those using three fingers. All right, now what I talked about, I think a few minutes ago here is giving that contextual long press. Let's go ahead and open up Over. And this is the app that I use for to create a lot of graphics here. Now, if I'm looking at any of my projects, if I hold one finger down here, it brings up the preview pane as along with whatever the contextual options are. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and do two fingers, which I certainly could, maybe I don't wanna see the preview. I'm just gonna go ahead and do, hold down two fingers and I see the same options minus the preview pane. Now where this, you know, it doesn't really matter here, but maybe let's say if you're in messages and if you wanna go ahead and do a quick reply to someone, you can go ahead and hold down and you can just say, okay, thank you. And there it goes. Same thing if you do two fingers, 
without that you get these quick text options which are really i think game changers if you do two fingers down you get the options to go ahead and call so this is all great stuff using uh, the trackpad on your ipad now let's go ahead and talk about text editing now here we're going to open up whoops we're going to go ahead and open up some text here we're going to go back to drafts and here so you see how this cursor actually changes depending on where I'm at. So here it's gonna be the trackpad cursor and if I put it on a line where there's text or where it's near text, it actually changes to the I-beam. Now if I wanna go ahead and select, I'm gonna go ahead and push down right before the sentence and drag through to wherever I want it to go ahead and end. Now let's just say I don't wanna go all the way to Fidge where I just wanna stop the keyboard, I'm gonna go ahead and let go there. Now, now if I go ahead and hold all the way through, let's just go ahead and stop at iPad and now I go ahead and push down with two fingers. This is gonna give you my contextual options, cut, copy, paste, whatever the case is. Now, one finger doesn't do anything here. So if I go, stop the keyboard again, one finger actually get, activates the text. And if I go on to go ahead and move that around so that you can go ahead and do that with your using the trackpad as well. So you can go ahead and first, you can double tap to select a word. You can go ahead and triple tap to select sentences. You can go ahead and two finger tap to get the contextual options, or you can single finger drag to go ahead and move that text around on the screen. Now, in reality, that wasn't too bad now, was it? That's because these gestures really, you know, it should take you no time to go ahead and master. And if you've been using a Mac, you should be super familiar with them because a lot of them are the same from the Mac. Now, those are my 25 favorite tips and tricks for Apple's Magic Trackpad 2. And I think my favorite one right now is gonna be able to be navigate back and forth using Safari with two fingers, you know, swiping left or right. I think that's a huge time saver opposed to picking up my finger, pulling it on the iPad and dragging left to right because my hand is already on the trackpad. Now, I would love to know what your favorite tip or trick is in the comments below. And if you know of a, a gesture that I missed, please go ahead and comment below so everyone can see it and we can kind of make use of this as a community. Now, I have a ton of other content coming for the iPhone and iPad this week. It's gonna be very busy, including my review with a Magic Keyboard, as well as my first impressions of the iPhone SE. Now, if you wanna see another video from me related to this one, I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the top left-hand corner here, as well as a suggestion from YouTube in the bottom left-hand corner. And if you wanna subscribe always, you can go ahead and click the logo up here above. I am Mike, and I will talk to you in the next one. Stay safe out there.